All right. Okay, everyone. So my name is Rachel Beglin, and I am the Farm Incubator Coordinator at Four Directions Development here in Red Lake, but it is my utmost pleasure to connect us to some of the Red Lake relatives who are not on the reservation, but doing really important Red Lake food sovereignty work in Minneapolis. So they're at Dream of Wild Health. If you guys are not connected to Dream of Wild Health, that is the next thing you should do after making your salad because I am so impressed. They have a farm, they do programming. It's Some things are really similar to what we do and some things are really different. And I'm just so excited that you guys get to speak with them. I don't really want to introduce them because I'm not sure I can do them fully justice for uh, all that they know and do. But Alana, um, Alana Norris we have here. And then we also have Hope Flanagan who both have a lot of experience um, specifically actually with Red Lake and Alana will be in the kitchen um, cooking and showing us what to do. And Hope will be giving us the um, context, language, culture, and insight that we so crave and that will make this dish that much more delicious. So as everyone's getting on, I don't know, I'm just okay, going to hand okay. it off to Dream of Wild Health. Got him muted. <laughs> and I will uh, hand it off to you guys. First of all, I want to say thank you, everybody, that we can see you. It makes me just happy. I Sometimes you just see the names, you go like, oh, I wonder if they're native or what's going on over there. And it makes me just happy to see you know, see you all showing up tonight. And I know it's a Friday night. Me, I'm always happy to be looking at uh, people in our community, looking at food and thinking about new ways of working with food. So thank you all for being here this evening. Um, I'll just do my quick, my introduction here. <laughs> Dream of Wild Health thing, a show this will be Bunicus, uh, Ige and Gia Yawan and my meal, uh, uh, Gawa, uh, I just want to say too, I'm real grateful that I've had an opportunity to be at Dream of Wild Health for 13 summers. So um, it's been around for a little over 20 years now where we got that land and uh, that food that we grow there. And then for me, I like to go out in the woods and go picking and that, that food that we gather and that we raise at the farm, it goes back into the, the native communities down here. One of our goals is to start to bring back some of those old trade routes. So if we're growing something down here and you all have access up there, Let's make sure our communities get fed, you know, and that we get good, clean, healthy food. Because um, a lot of times, you know, people might might feel like, gosh, we don't have much in the way of grocery stores, or they might feel like, gosh, we don't have uh, um, access to a lot of clean food. It might be food that's all sprayed up with pesticides and herbicides or genetically modified or something. So we want to make sure that our good, clean food are going to our families and that we're figuring out how to use these foods, too, that if they're not foods we're used to using. So I'm really, really grateful that y'all are showing up tonight. Um, I do want to mention that uh, that's one thing I get to do is I get to take people out walking around in the woods looking for plants for food or tea or medicine or whatever. And then um, I get to tell stories too. So if you ask uh, Melody or Bonnie Kingbird, they'll say, yeah, my mom, Ona, they, she passed on those stories to Hope. So I get to share the stories that, that Ona passed on to me. So um, that's what I do in the cities for all of us, for all of us down here and those young ones that got trapped down here in the cities, uh, I get to share some of those things. So miigwech bizendawiye, thank you for listening and I'll pass it on to Alana. Yay, thanks Hope. So hi everyone, my name is Alana. Um, I'm from Red Lake, but I grew up mostly in St. Paul um, and I am the nutrition program coordinator at Dream of Wild Health. And I've been here for about two years now, it'll be two years in June. And I'm super excited for today's cooking lesson. We're gonna be making our Four Sisters Pasta Yapi Salad, which is a recipe from our Youth Leaders Cookbook here. 
And I guess that's it about me. We can go ahead and dive right into our recipe. Um, so assuming you guys have all your ingredients out, um, go ahead and give them a good rinse under some cold water. And then we will start. And then if you wanna rinse your wild rice too and get that on the stove, that would be a great idea because we wanna let that cool off a little bit if we can before we assemble everything. So even that in itself sometimes can be a, a thing that people talk about because some families grow up saying no rinsing wild rice. But then that all depends on who is like picking the rice, you know, like some people will say, yes, you always have to rinse your rice, depending on how it's gathered. Because like, for me, if if uh, the person didn't put down like a tarp or something, when they're knocking the rice, and they might uh, step into their canoe with boots on their demoning demoning, if you're getting into the canoe, and you've got your boots on, you often track in little pebbles and rocks and dirt. So that's why, you know, when um, Alana is saying rinse off your rice, because uh, when we when we get this rice, we don't always know who picked this rice. So when we rinse it off, we're trying to make sure that we're getting any, you know, if somebody was was knocking rice and they had their boots on or whatever and they picked up dirt and little pebbles, we want to make sure you don't break a tooth, you know, uh, that, our, that our rice is nice and clean. Yes, that is very true. And I don't know if we have any younger kids joining us today, but this is a perfect recipe for them to kind of get involved in the kitchen too with cooking because it's pretty simple. What we're gonna do is we have a lot of vegetables that we need to chop up. And I know that's always fun. Um, our youth always enjoy helping out in the kitchen when it comes to that kind of stuff. And then um, as our rice is cooking, we'll make sure to keep an eye on that as well. And as far as any type of supplies goes, it'd be good to get out a cutting board, um, a chef's knife, and then you'll probably want to grab like a big mixing bowl or something like this, about this size. And then we'll also probably want a smaller one too, to mix up our dressing. One of the things we do at Dream of Wild Health is that the young ones, they can start as young as eight years old, and then they really, we really want them to come year after year back to the farm. So like right now we have uh, two of our students are working at the Owamani restaurant, you know, so that they've come to the farm, they learn how to grow the food, they learn how to harvest the food, then when they're at the farm, they learn how to cook the food. So um, those are the kinds of things we want to make sure that they're learning. I, I know like one of our youth who's been in the program for seven years now, she's going to she's in the marketing division now. So um, that's Alyssa Parkhurst from Red Lake. And what she's doing is looking at how do you put together uh, like value added products and how do you make sure that these products get back into the native community? Cause sometimes, you know, you look at something, gosh, I got an idea. My grandma used to do this one kind of a tea and, uh, it was called, she used to call it trapper's tea. This is a true story. So this one grandma, she goes, Oh, we used to make trapper's tea when trapper's tea, tea when we were out on the trap line and it was a combination of three plants well if we wanted to you could say no ghost trappers tea and have it as a values at values added product so those are the kinds of things you can do all righty so we can go ahead and get started chopping up our vegetables so why don't we start with, we'll do our zucchini first. So I already rinsed these off. Try to angle this down, there we go. And we're just gonna cut these into pretty small cubes. So cut the ends off first. And I'm gonna leave the peel on because the peel actually has a lot of nutrients in it, especially fiber. So I'm gonna leave that on just to get the extra nutrients added in there. And I'm just going to cut it lengthwise. 
Who so here is cooking with zucchini for the very first time? Wow. First time for me, other than like frozen. Hey, yay. Gosh, if you want to dip your toe into having a garden, zucchinis are so generous. If you start to grow a zucchini plant or two, they, if they're happy in the soil, they really like to put out summer squashes. They just need water and some space to grow in. And you'll get lots and lots of these zucchinis generally from the middle of the summer to the end of the summer. So I want to ask Alana, like, is there, is there something that you find like zucchini is particularly good? good at you know like is it a flavor holder is it fun to use in stir fry or is there something that you particularly like about zucchini yeah so i was just gonna say zucchini is one of those vegetables that's super versatile so you can eat zucchini in so many different ways you can make zucchini bread i like to eat it kind of like as a maybe like carrot sticks kind of like that where you just dip it in some ranch or maybe some hummus that's really good but one thing that we make a lot at our summer programs is stir fry. And we always add zucchini to our stir fry. And you can roast it too. It's really easy to roast. Add it to spaghetti sauce. I'd say zucchini is one of my favorite foods besides blueberries. <laughs> I find that too. I like to roast it. Like I'll put a cookie sheet in the oven and I'll just put some soy sauce on there. And then I'll I'll um, bake it in the oven for a while till it gets kind of a little bit mushy. I love the flavor of it with that, like that. Ooh, soy sauce. I've never thought, like aside from stir fry, I didn't think to roast it with soy sauce. That sounds really yeah. good. Oh. Maybe some ginger or something too. Ooh, that would be good. Yeah. Put some ginger on there. I find zucchini is a really good one to trick kids who don't like to eat their vegetables because it doesn't have too strong of a flavor, but it's so good for you. It's a lot of fiber, like Alana was saying, and you can cover it in any flavor you want and you don't really have to taste it. If you don't want to, if you like zucchini, then you can taste it as much as you want. Gee, at the Dream of Wild Health Farm, we've actually had to cut down on how much zucchini we grow because it gives off so much zucchini. So in the language, if you hear the word okanakosimanen, that's talking about squash, but it's talking about the hard-shelled winter squash. So you would hear the word okosimanen would be like this kind of a squash, uh, what they call a summer squash. The summer squashes are the one with the ones with a thin skin. So sometimes you'll see them. It looks like a zucchini. Sometimes it'd be yellow squash. Sometimes it looks like a yellow and green mixed squash. But those are all what you might call summer squashes. Sometimes those yellow ones will look like they're really fat at one end. But it's the same thing, you know, a yellow squash. And even for them, you can eat the blossoms. So it's kind of a fancy way, but some people will say, put a little, you know, you can put a little bit of cheese inside the blossom and then uh, roast the blossom on either side. Ooh, that sounds good. And I forgot to mention, so we're gonna need about one cup of chopped zucchini total. And I'm just adding that to our big mixing bowl. So whenever you're done, go ahead and put it in there. And then I'm gonna move on to a cucumber. We're gonna cut it the exact same way. Squash or zucchini is one of those vegetables that's also really good dehydrated too. You can make zucchini chips. It kind of takes a while, but they're worth it. They're super good. So you can kind of tell from the name and the language, like Okosiman and for squash, it's talking about how you pile them up in a pile. But for cucumbers, you'll hear people say cucubansum, which means, you know, somebody heard somebody say it in English. 
So that's why they call it that kukubainsum. But you might ask your family, maybe your family has a different name for that because sometimes these vegetables like this, that people are like, what the heck is that? You might have a, an unusual name because different communities and families, when you would see a vegetable for the first time, you might come up with a different name. So some families would say, oh, I don't know what it is, but we're gonna call it this. And that's where you get some dialectical differences when, you, when you're talking in the language and you say, oh, uh, I'm from one area. And it, here's another good example of that. In some areas in Red Lake, hey, oh, what a cutie pie. I see Spider-Man. Is that Spider-Man? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so in one area of Red Lake, you might so you might hear somebody say, Nimbukade, meaning I'm hungry. But in another area in Red Lake, if you hear somebody say, Nimbukade, they might say, I am literally starving. You can see my ribs. So I made the mistake of doing that once. I, I was across the border in Canada and I said, Nimbukade, and they started chuckling because I got a big old belly. <laughs> said that's not true Hope, look at your big old belly <laughs> like, yeah i guess i'm not starving to death so that's just dialectical differences that's always super interesting to hear about then i'm gonna put this in the big mixing bowl so one thing i want to note with this recipe is that you can really switch up these vegetables to include just a whole bunch of different kinds. So I couldn't find turnips at the store. So I just got some radishes here. Um, any root vegetable that's really hearty like that and crunchy is gonna work really, really well in this recipe. Slightly different taste and flavor, but they're both just as good. Maybe could we do a check-in just to see where people are? Are, are people uh, yeah. like able to get a knife and cut the, um, the cucumbers and the squashes down? Great idea. And if I'm going too fast, definitely let me know. Or if you guys have any questions, type them in the chat or just feel free to ask them too. Yeah, everyone, feel free to unmute yourself if you wanna throw in um, or show your camera on what you've just cut up or anything like that so that we can all not only keep up and, and make sure everyone's at the same pace, but also so we can just see beautiful vegetables getting chopped in Red Lake. I love to see that. Yeah. And don't forget about your wild rice. <laughs> I'm cutting cucumbers. You're cutting cucumbers. All right. I'll pause for just a little bit to give you guys some time to. I'm so used to working at a fast pace in our kitchen during the summer. <laughs> it's so busy in there. Yeah, and I just want to add for those of you who are going to enjoy your zucchini and cucumber, we have um, seeds for those right now at our, at our office and they're going to be planted this spring as soon as the ground thaws and the buds start appearing. So our mobile farmer's market is going to be moving around the reservation as always and um, look no further for very reasonably priced organic so no pesticides, no chemicals. Um, produce like that and, and we'll have that around so uh, don't feel like zucchini is too far away I know that the trading post doesn't always have it but we will I'm not sure if I missed it or not but do we throw in the whole cucumber yes okay. so the recipe um calls for about one cup chopped but you can add more, you can add less. Does anybody have a copy of our Youth Theaters cookbook that's joining us today? I know we don't sell it like in stores or anything like that. It's just online for now and at the farmer's market, but 
Nobody. So Alana, can somebody like page through it online? So that would be a really great idea, but unfortunately we don't have an online version of it. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind though. We're working on our next cookbook. So Yay. that would be kind of a fun thing. Uh, really fun thing. I know um, last summer uh, I, I went to visit a family. They had a big old family reunion and actually they were giving away things they were having their giveaway, a memorial giveaway. And uh, I received a cookbook from Red Lake. And man, did that make me just happy. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got a new cookbook. And it was, it belonged to the one who, who um, passed away. And it ended up, it was a relative of, of Lana's, her grandma that worked on that cookbook. So that is something, if you have a special recipe, maybe who knows what kind of of a recipe it is and it turns out to be something healthy that you really enjoy that uh that might be a fun thing to get some recipes together yes i didn't even know she was going to be in there i saw her picture i'm like that's my grandma <laughs> cute <laughs> yeah i know um tyler johnson who is our cook for our very beginner cooking classes of which uh some of our audience members are are in both and tyler johnson wrote a recipe that i might be in the same cookbook when he was in the 11th grade wow i know super cool one of the things we're working at at dream of wild health is like they call it i don't know how to say it other than indigenizing recipes so if there's something that um that oh gee i don't have access to x i can put in y because that's what we have right here you know so um and it could be a whole variety of things you know it could be things that gee we have access to you know fill in the blank that we wouldn't normally have um trying to think of a good example of that you know, people, people down here in the cities, they don't have access to a lot of the indigenous foods. So when we, and they do have access to it and they can indigenize it, I guess is the way to say it, um, then they can get a little bit more creative. So uh, that's kind of a fun way to think about things. For example, here's one um, I know Alana has done like for me, I like to go picking berries in the fall. And down here, we've got a berry. I haven't really seen it much, too much up there, but I've seen it in the Boundary Waters. It's a berry called Aronia. And I'll pick a whole bunch of it, and she makes popsicles out of them. And they're really good for um, high and supporting your immune system. So Aronia, it's funny because you'll go to these, like, if you go to a fancy grocery store, they'll have this, like, Aronia, you know, like something special. And it's like, gosh, they all you have to do is go out in the woods and go pick a bunch of them. And Alana would make some popsicles out of them, you know, and uh, people like to drink it as a liquid, as a superfood and an antioxidant uh, immune, build, uh, immune system builder. Yeah, uh, during summer programs, um, one of our guest chefs, Elena Terry, she also made a really good aronia berry ice cream using wild rice milk that we made. Um, and we blended it all together in a blender and it turned out this beautiful like magenta purple color and everyone loved it. It was super good. Really easy to make too. And then, um, so I'm just moving on to our next step here, which is we're going to slice our green onions pretty thin, as thin as we can get them. And we're going to need about one fourth cup. And then we'll just add that right to our mixing bowl with our zucchini and our cucumber. For anyone who doesn't know, with your green onions, if you cut off the bottoms and leave the white part with all the little roots coming off, you can put that in a glass of water and you can get a second batch of green onions for free. <laughs> put that in the sun, throw them in a little glass jar, a little sippy cup, anything with some water, 
and those things will grow right back. So I always do that. I always get get two for one. <laughs> Yay! Here's another one that I know works. There's oh, there's so many things I get excited about. One is these friends of mine that are from Nigagunsa Minikaning Reserve up there uh, in by um, uh, Otter Tail Lake by Rain, on the other side of Rainy Lake. They planted some chives just in a wet spot in their lawn. And oh my gosh, every year those chives come back. So they get more and more and more. And even though they cut them and use them just as onions, they always get more. They're really uh, easy to grow. So um, just getting something started like that. Uh, here's another one that you might be interested in, Rachel, is that another friend of mine up there at Nigigo and Semitic Conning, she saves her old milk jugs, like the plastic ones, and she turns them into little mini greenhouses. So she'll put dirt in there, and then she'll tape them with duct tape, and this time of year is when she gets started. She'll start them, and uh, they have to be that kind of a little bit translucent, you know, where you can kind of see sunlight. But I tell you, one time I went up there and they were in like five inches of snow and they were all started. Like she had all these green plants growing in these jugs. So their milk jugs, all she had to do was cut them open and transplant them once the ground thawed out. And she had her um, little green plants already started. She didn't need to have like a fancy old greenhouse she could just use her milk jugs i love that so resourceful yeah so rachel do you mean like put these ends in a glass of water is that what you're saying yeah exactly i normally if i'm gonna do that i might cut um with an inch or so um just to leave a little base for the plant but yeah i stick those little roots in water and boom a couple days later it's green again I'm going to try that. That's a great idea. One more onion here. And then the next thing that we can start working on is you guys will have turnips, but I'll have these radishes here. And I usually don't peel turnips either. Um, that's more of a personal preference. If you want to peel them, you definitely can. But the peel, it's not going to change the taste. It's not going to make it tougher because it's a thin peel on the outside. So what you want to do is go ahead and chop that up into small squares. I wish I had one I could demo, but I usually start by cutting it in half and then I'll work from there. So I have a flat edge to work with on the cutting board. Otherwise it just rolls around. So one thing I remember learning about was um, radishes, especially like daikon radishes will help with cholesterol. So I don't know, I'm assuming just the texture of a radish that it's so similar to the daikon radish, it might also help with cholesterol levels. Like if someone has a lot of like fats in their blood and they're having a hard time with, with like uh, keeping their cholesterol down for their heart. You know, I'm thinking that radishes help with that. I know for sure that daikon radishes do. That's interesting. I don't know off the top of my head either. And then one more thing I want to mention too is, especially if you guys have kids cooking in the kitchen with you, if you want to taste these ingredients as you're making things, then you kind of get a feel for what might be good to add in next time. Or maybe I want to replace this with something else, or maybe I want to add more radish or turnips and just taste it as you go. Yeah. I would also guess that because they're a little spicy, not too spicy, but they've got just like a little kick to them. I wonder if um, they're pretty good for the cardiovascular system. Usually anything with a little heat gets your blood moving and can be really good for getting blood to go and circulate throughout the body. It opens up all your little veins and capillaries. Gosh, that would match with that, uh, the, the cholesterol, because that's all about the blood too. So mm -hmm. that really does match. At the farm, we grow radishes. The radishes are so forgiving because we use, we grow radish sprouts and eat them as sprouts. 
and they start even before the snow is off the ground we start growing the sprouts to eat in salads and they're nice spicy greens then we start growing them and they're really another one that's eager to grow so fairly early in the spring you can pull them out and there they are the red radishes or the white radishes and then you can do another crop of them so we do radishes all summer long we'll rotate where they grow but i don't know how many batches of radishes we end up growing it's a few so here's another thing that we do at the farm that is kind of fun is like we would use we would plant radishes in particular daikon radishes because they grow a really thick root like a super fat carrot so it helps to revive the soil so you let some like the rain will come down and seep down further into the soil and then if you let some of the radishes in there then all the the organisms in the soil that help revive the soil will eat on those radishes and quickens the pace for restoring your soil. But one time we had a bunch of people come out and they're like, oh, I love to eat those radishes. So you can use them either way, either use them to restore the, sal- the soil or pull them out and use them in your food. I love that. I love that what is good for our bodies is usually good for the soil too. Yep. If any of you guys are um, in Project Grow, where we come and till your garden, I know there are uh, radish seeds in our garden kits this year. So you guys will have to get your hands on those. Those will be coming out in April when we go around and set up some home gardens. So definitely familiarize yourselves with the turnips and the radishes because they're coming for you. So I'm curious, I know everyone's likely heard of the three sisters, but what about the four sisters? Does anybody know if there's a fourth sister or who that is? I know Hope and I have had this discussion before. (laughs) Yep. Any guesses on that one? I think she got captured from a different tribe and dragged over somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) She got stolen. (laughs) No. She's just visiting. She's visiting, huh? She's she she must have heard there was a powwow over there. Like, what you what your sister's doing over there? I'll come visit. So the three sisters corn beans and squash they they do grow together because they truly help each other so what they would say is so you'd have if you put a mound of earth there and i don't know if you guys are like my mom but my mom would always say save those fish guts and put them in the garden so that's what i used to do and then you'd pile you can heap up a pile of dirt put those fish guts down below and then you put the corn right in the middle and then you put the the um the beans around and then you put the squash well i'm sorry i got it the other way around put the corn in the middle then the squash and then the beans well actually you can do those two either way because they're going to start to crawl up the corn and then the big leaves of the squash will make sure that that uh like raccoons and other little creatures that want to come they're going to be stopped a little bit by the squash because it's kind of prickly a little bit and then the beans put nitrogen back in the soil so the beans are feeding the corn and the squash the squash is protecting the corn the corn is providing a trellis for the beans and the squash too so they're all really for real helping each other but that fourth sister, I don't know, they, they left her standing in the water. <laughs> Probably left her over at the powwow because she was trying to snag. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. I said, go on and stand in the water then if you're going to be like that. <laughs> I'm just cutting these cherry tomatoes in half into smaller pieces. 
if you guys have younger children in your household, um, you might want to cut these even smaller too. I once heard on the radio that people who eat tomatoes are happier. I don't know if it's true, but the radio told me that. <laughs> there is a, a biochemistry in tomatoes that are really good for your heart. Um, I'm forgetting the, the name of it. Alana, do you remember? Lipocene? That's it, lipocenes. Yep. The chemistry of the tomato, yeah, it helps your heart. And there's so many so many of uh, the plants that are related to the tomatoes like peppers or ground cherries or even the nightshades like um i know when i was little we used to eat black nightshades and they go like nightshade how come they call it something like that but it's a tasty berry i remember going out and picking uh ground cherries when i was little too my mom would get us out there picking that so um those are relatives of the tomato so maybe maybe you ever heard somebody say, well, how do you say that in Ojibwe? They'll say, oh yeah, that's um, chi ogin. Chi ogin means big uh, big rose hip, because whoever saw them, you know, when they were coming up from the south, they'd say, gee, that looks like a big old rose hip that um, that cherry. And you can kind of see it like the way Alana's working right now. Is it for real? Looks like a big old rose hip, you know. So chi ogin, big rose hip. And then if you want to say uh, they're considered animate or alive, so you'd say Oganig, Chi Oganig, like, uh, yeah, there they, oh man, that's so pretty. We have some more tomatoes. And if you ever cannot find these cherry kind, you can always use regular tomatoes too. So the reason why she's cutting them like that is because little ones, you know, like the little bitty kids, they could choke on those. So that's why you want to make sure they're cut. And into the same mixing bowl. If your rice is done, um, it might be a good idea to transfer it to a separate bowl so that it cook or it cools down a little faster. You could even transfer it to like a, a large plate or something too, but we have plenty of time left. So I think it'll cool down by then. And then I'll just pause, and give everyone some time to catch up. How did um how did rising season go up there this year? Did the rice was the rice good up there this year? Y'all are the experts. Going. I mean, yeah, it wasn't good down here in the cities either. There wasn't even hardly any water, so you couldn't hardly get your canoe in anywhere. I, I checked out 11 spots that I knew of down here by the cities where usually you can get your canoe in and there was only one where I could get my canoe in and even then, it, you know, the rice was hardly any, you know, the amount was small too. I do want to say this is an interesting thing. Um, there's a different species of wild rice you go like what and that's for real that used to grow south down by um down by st louis and it's been coming up coming up this the mississippi river it's really really tall i've seen it grow as much as 13 feet tall and that's the southern species of wild rice and over the last three years, it came into the Twin Cities, and now it's north of the Twin Cities. It's been following the Mississippi River. And I did see one place, one of the places where I like to go pick, it had both the northern 
wild rice and the southern wild rice. But the thing that that meant is that, gee, the um, animals were really benefiting. So, uh, for example, even there, like at Mystic Lake and at uh, like, you know, Shakopee or Prairie Island, that southern wild rice came up. And so there was a lot more swans, a lot more geese, a lot more ducks. And then the uh, muskrats came back and some of the four legged little like the little mice and all that they came back. So then different types of hawks were able to come back. So for any of you who are interested in looking at birds, I like to look at birds. They had um, rough legged hawks and northern harriers that hadn't been in that area for a long time. But because the rice came back, the birds were the hawks were able to come back. Okay, so I can't quite see where everyone's at, but we will move on to our next step here, um, which is going to be our cilantro. And we're going to need about one fourth cup of cilantro leaves. So the best way that I can describe how to get these off real quick without getting all these stems in there is to just glide your knife kind of along the edge or down the middle here. So make sure that it's flat like against your cutting board and then just go ahead and do that. And that usually gets rid of most of the stems, but there's still going to be some in there too, which is fine. Does anyone here unfortunately have the gene where cilantro tastes like soap? I do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> poor Liz, poor Liz. You too, Hope? Yes. <laughs> oh, I. I'm so sorry, you guys. Cilantro is so good. It's the yeah. most important ingredient. <laughs> I tried to hide off camera and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> just to try it. But yeah, we're going to skip that. <laughs> and once I have the leaves together here, I usually like to just bunch them up or roll them up as best as I can. And then just take my knife and Cut them into smallish pieces, as small as you can get them. Oh, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this, Alana, because I've noticed that for me, because it tastes soapy, I'll usually get parsley instead of instead of cilantro. And parsley works good for me. Have you ever heard of that before? I just kind of did it, and I didn't know if that was crazy or not. No, that's a, actually a really good idea. So if, yeah, if you don't like cilantro, give parsley a try. The flavor is just a little different, but I think it'll be really good. i would never tried it though. Cilantro too is something that minus those of you who don't enjoy it, um, can grow it in your windowsill. It grows really, really easily. And, you know, sometimes you go to the store and that big bunch, you know, you only need a little bit. And so you can always have that just, you know, all winter long, um, herbs do really well indoors, um, even, even in Northern Minnesota where it's so cold. So um, something to consider, save you a lot of money and put a lot of fresh and delicious greens into your food is just have a little herb garden in your windowsill. Another kind of a thing that I do do is like right now I got a big old lot of um, parsley stems and you can do this with your cilantro too and I'm eventually going to make a vegetable broth out of it so like any parts you don't use like today I've got some parsnips where the ends are really kind of scrawny looking but I'll put them in boiling water with those parsley ends like the stalks and just boil it up and it's going to give it a nice flavor and it'll be like a vegetable soup um, broth yeah, that's a great idea. And if you are, if you don't have enough vegetable scraps initially, you can always toss them in a freezer bag and then put them in your freezer until you have enough. But that's a really great idea. I used to work in a, um, in a Ojibwe immersion classroom for little ones, like two to five year olds. And we would sing this one song. It goes like this. It goes, na booby cane, na booby cane, me a jaguan ni bukkade, na booby cane. 
<laughs> which that means, you know, like, make soup, make soup. Right now I'm hungry, make soup. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Um, just a quick update for you, Alana, is that they have lemon juice instead of lime juice tonight. Okay, that'll work just as great. That's actually the next step here is we're going to need um, a one fourth cup of lime or lemon juice. And that is going to go in our smaller bowl because this is going to be part of our dressing. How much of the lemon juice? One fourth cup. Okay. And it goes in a separate bowl? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it had never occurred to me to um, make my own make salad, my dressing own salad dressing ever. It's super easy. Like the rule of thumb for a vinaigrette is I've heard chefs say three parts oil, one part vinegar, and then you can add whatever herbs or spices that you want in there. And that usually works pretty well. And then a sweetener too, like maple syrup. Some people use agave or honey. That's going to help. So those things, so honey, maple syrup, agave, those are called emulsifiers. So when you add them to your salad dressing, it helps everything stay in one uniform mixture so that it doesn't separate. And if it does separate, that's okay. But it helps it stay mixed together when you add those ingredients. So do, does it actually break down the oil or it just like makes it mix up? I don't know the exact science behind that because mustard is also an emulsifier. Wow. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to look that up though. So that's one of the things I get excited about is because a lot of you probably see those bright yellow flowers that uh if you try to eat them just just wild they're going to be pretty bitter but once they go to seed there's quite a few different kinds of mustards in in minnesota and you can gather those seeds up and they have a mustardy flavor but they also have a nice peppery flavor so there's one i know i gave a bag of um, a bag of it to alana that we call it poor man's pepper and you can eat it, you know, like I'll just go outside and pick a bunch of it and you can eat it almost like little asparagus, but then later in the fall, you can collect the seeds and use it as your flavoring. There it is. Yeah. That's that poor man's pepper. That's just a wild, uh, that's a wild mustard. So then you can use that. It, to me, it kind of tastes like a everything bagel. You know, it's got a little, garlicky taste, a little mustardy taste, and a little peppery taste. Um, Hope, do you know if that grows in Red Lake? I do not, but I do know that there are some wild mustards that grow up in Red Lake. What you're going to look for is fairly early in the spring, you're going to look for a super bright yellow flower, you know, so, um, and it'll have like, a, oh gosh, maybe I'm going to see if I can find a, a picture of a mustard. Our next ingredient that we're going to add with our lime or lemon juice is a maple syrup. And we're going to need two tablespoons. Oh, look at that. Red Lake Nation Foods, baby. So here's, um, yeah, here's wild mustard. That bright yellow. And sometimes you'll see all sorts of fields of it, of wild mustards. 
Excuse me, Rachel, do we add these in the salad now? Don't ask me, that's an Alana question. <laughs> <laughs> so for our salad um, dressing, so our lime or lemon juice and our maple syrup, we're gonna add that to a separate bowl first. Okay. We're gonna mix it up, yep. And then we will add it in a little bit. And then our next ingredient is going to be one half cup of sunflower oil. And if you don't have sunflower oil, olive oil also works really well. Yep, everyone, you guys have uh, extra virgin olive oil tonight. Mm. How much was that? A half cup, right, Alana? Yes, a half cup. And that goes in the lemon juice? Yep, right into the lemon juice and maple syrup. Okay. Then we want to grab some measuring spoons because we're going to need one teaspoon of ground cumin. And this will also go in the same bowl here. I always like to add just a pinch of salt and pepper in there too. Excuse me, Alana. Yep. Is that um, half a teaspoon of salt? Did you put it there? You can go by the recipe and add a half teaspoon. I usually just add like a pinch and that's good enough. Alrighty, really, thank you. Yeah, it's really up to preference. Then we are going to whisk all of these ingredients together. Um, and then if you guys ever make this recipe again, an easy way if you just don't want to get out a bowl or a whisk is to use a mason jar and then you can just shake it up. Just super easy. Mix then it doesn't look like a lot of dressing, but a little bit goes a long way. Trust me. We mix our lemon stuff in our our vegetables. So that part, I'm I was gonna note. Um, if you plan on eating your salad either today or tomorrow, you can go ahead and mix all of it in. But if you plan on eating it over the next few days, I would wait to mix it all in. That way your vegetables don't get soggy um, or your rice doesn't get soggy. Usually it doesn't get too bad, but I like to just add it in as I'm um, plating it up. Oh, okay. And then we also have a couple more ingredients too that we're gonna add to our vegetable mixture as well. And that's going to be our black beans. And then we also have some hominy here. Gee, now that would make that like a whole balanced meal, right? Yeah, you got everything in here. And we're gonna need one 15 ounce can of the black beans and then about one cup of hominy. But if you guys have like the can of hominy, you can just add the whole thing in there too. This this um the last three years are um we we have a seed keeper her name is uh jessica green deer and what she does is try to revive old seeds you know and people maybe had them in a science museum or maybe they were sitting in a mason jar for years and years and years actually she last year she had this little jar of seeds that had been sitting there for 75 years and it only had seven seeds in there and she got six of the seven of them to sprout. It's like, holy cow. 
But anyway, I did want to mention that they had found a bean. Uh, it's a little yellowish bean that they found over at Wiki Bay over in um, Ontario that they call uh, Ojibwe women's bean. And so um, she wanted to make sure that our garden warriors, the ones that uh, uh, are Ojibwe, that they were able to take some home and to try growing that bean. So then once they grow that bean, then they can share those beans with their relatives and they show their beans, those beans with their relatives. So it goes out and out and out. So it goes back to the, the communities, you know, the families. Beautiful. I've heard that called um, rematriation. Yes. It's so rematriation. pretty. Yeah. Man, that would be, a, I don't know um, how Jessica does things, but it sure would be nice to get some of those Ojibwe women's beans up there. I don't know if they are or not yet, you know. Someday. Someday. Yeah. And I want to emphasize something, Hope, that you just said, too, is that this is this salad is a whole meal. I think sometimes we're under, like, the impression that a salad is just, like, a little sad lettuce and ranch combo that comes with your burger or something else. Um, but the way that they have this salad organized and all the foods in it, it's a whole meal. It's everything that you need. It's got the beans. That's going to be your protein. I'm not a nutritionist, so... You know, take this all with a grain of salt, but not too much salt. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, that's so cool that the salad is going to fill you up and it's going to be delicious and it's going to have a lot of nutrients, not just, you know, the, the lettuce and the, the dressing. I have to ask Alana about that. She's the nutritionist. She really is. She knows about that kind of thing. So. Yeah, awesome. no, Rachel is right. You have the beans for protein. We have our wild rice, which also has protein in it too, but it's also a healthy carbohydrate choice and it has fiber in it. So it's going to give you a lot of energy and the protein that's going to give you that sustained energy throughout the day. So, um, this would be a really, really good lunch to take to work or something. Cause it's going to keep you full for a long time. Oh, and then I also added the wild rice in here. So I'm just stirring it together. And then you guys um, also have some mixed greens. So these are just like a spring mix. You can use any type of greens, really. I've never tried it with spinach, but any mixed green is always really good. And the way that I like to place this is I usually keep everything, these three ingredients, so our salad dressing, our vegetables and rice, and the lettuce separate until I mix it together. And what I'll do, let me open this here, is I'll just take like a handful of greens and put it in a bowl or on a plate, maybe a handful and a half or something. Then I'll take a scoop or two of the vegetable mixture and rice and just put that over the top like that. And you could do like less greens and more of the vegetables. It's totally up to you guys. And then with our dressing, I'll usually take about like a tablespoon is usually a good amount to start with at least. And I'll just drizzle that over the top. And like I said, this dressing goes a long way. So definitely start with a smaller amount first. And then you can stir it up and see if you wanna add some more. But this way it doesn't get soggy in the refrigerator or anything like that. So if you mix it up, I think this is a perfect amount. I don't think I need to add any more. And that is it. It's a uh, Alana, how do you keep your, um, if you want to use, keep that salad dressing to use more of it later, what do you do with it? So with our salad dressing, you can just put that in an airtight container. So a mason jar, whatever you have, and just put it in the fridge and it'll stay good for, I would say about a week. 
And the same with our salad too. This will stay good for at least another five days. I don't know if it'll last that long. It never does around here, but. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Um, I'm not, I see some people trying it, which makes me so happy. So I don't know if you guys have any commentary or questions or thoughts or reflections, but now would be a great time to throw anything out there that is crossing your mind. Maybe you've even got a suggestion like, Man, if it was me, I'd spice it up. <laughs> or if it was me, I'd make it a little sweeter or something, you know, like think about how if you wanted to change it, because that's that whole idea when they say indigenizing a food, it's just personalizing it. You're making it in a way that would be specific to you. And who knows, you might come up to you might come up with like red lake, red lake uh salad dressing that people are going like oh uh, i want to try some of that red lake salad dressing <laughs> it'll be your own idea that's me i liked i added a couple more tablespoons of the maple syrup i really like that to me i wanted it a little bit sweeter but that was Ooh. other i'm excited to try it yeah thank you for sharing that yeah i always like to hear people's ideas too <laughs> This aloe is delicious. Yay! In the chat, um, Kay Barrett says, this salad is so colorful and fresh looking. Makes my heart happy. What are you thinking, Liz? I did a food dance when I took my first bite. It's delicious. <laughs> So, for like sharing. Oh, Miigwech for being here today and, and teaching your little one about cooking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that just makes me happy. I know some of you must be like me where you, you get to be a little older and you go like, I'm just so happy when the little ones get to get a good lesson about being healthier or taking good care of themselves, you know? One thing I think I would add to a salad is when uh, the lilac bushes come in, all those little purple flowers, you can eat them. And I just think they're so pretty in your food. I don't know if they have any nutritional benefit whatsoever, but gosh, they're pretty. <laughs> and the smell, the smell is wonderful. We yeah. do, a, a, last year we had a whole section of the farm that was all edible flowers. Because nowadays we're doing, uh, um, we're growing foods for different chefs. So like uh, Sean Sherman or Derek Nicholas or uh, Brian Yazzie. So they'll say, hey, would you grow some? And then they'll say something like, um, maybe you'll grow some hyssop. That's one that they really like because it's real pretty. It's purple and it's natural to this area and it tastes like licorice like good licorice you know so you can use it to just kind of offset some other flavors yeah i was just gonna say we have a lot of those edible flowers out at the farm and we always sprinkle them like over the top of our salad but one thing that I like to do is I'll make um, ice cubes out of them. So Ooh. I'll fill up an ice cube tray with water and then just put one flower in each little space and then add it to like your lemonade or your iced tea or even your water too. It doesn't really change the flavor. It just looks really pretty. Oh, I like Raina saying, uh, thank you, Lana. It's delicious. And I like how the wild rice is filling. Oh, you know, yeah. we are so fortunate, you, you all. I, I think that all the time, you know, that we have wild rice in, in this area because most people don't have anything like wild rice. It's a perfect food, you know, like it's got protein, it's got carbohydrates, it's got the nutrition that people just... Uh, um are so fortunate to have the wild rice around here you know i'm just grateful for it
Well, thank you everyone for being here. And uh, Reina says she's got a new way to use her wild rice, which is so Yay. exciting. Thank you, Hope. Thank you, Alana. That was so enlightening because I've actually never had a salad with rice in it before. And now I'm gonna go home and try this too. Um, and can I, she, I wanna share one more thing. Um, yes, I remember, uh, like I said, um, uh, some of you might have remembered some of you might remember Ona and I remember like she would bring her her rice around you know like when it was still green you know like right off the stalks if you want to try to create more rice beds you can make a little mud ball where the rice is and then throw it in the bends of creeks or in the shallow areas of lakes but do it before it dries out so that's the possibility of introducing a rice bed to a new area. You want to do it when the rice is still like before it's been dried out or toasted, you know, like before you parch it, like when it's still green, put it in a little mud ball and then throw it in a river, a creek, any area where it might spread the rice so you can start a new rice bed. There's more and more evidence that our relatives did that years ago that they were really thoughtful about like, let's make sure wherever we travel, we're bringing uh, a new place to gather food by bringing bringing those foods and medicines to places where we might, you might set up camp or where there might be people um, spending time. Ah. These are beautiful, beautiful chats. I hope everyone gets a chance to read them. Yeah. And um, if you guys ever make any other types of salad, feel free to just toss some wild rice in there. It's kind of like adding black beans to a salad or corn to a salad. It adds a lot of extra nutrients and it's gonna give you that really big boost of energy to get you through the whole day. So definitely, you know, experiment around and find what you like, but I always add some rice to my salad now. Or some sunflower seeds too. That was another ingredient, I think, in this salad. If you wanted to add some, you could. Yeah, everyone does have those sunflower seeds if you want to put them on top. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but sunflower seeds are native too. So um, if you, like the, the old fashioned native ones are the little ones you find growing along the side of the road. But, you know, all of those sunflower seeds are from this area, from North America. So we're fortunate to have that. Miigwitch Gagin. Miigwitch. All right, everyone. I think people must be hungry because they're yes. all trying to say thanks. We want to eat our yeah. salads. Aha, aha. Giga mama minanam, gina wa, get chimmy gwitch. Give me Alana will be in touch. Aha, get chimmy gwitch. Thank you all. It's really, really thankful that you all came and visited. I miss visiting. Eh? <laughs> we'll come out sometime. Time. Hey, yeah. We'll Next Friday, here. Rachel. <laughs> okay, guys. Good night. See you. See you later.